Hare Krishna. Text 21. Parasya punsa paramatmana kala Ajam prajatam jagata shivayatan Mahanubhava budayo digarayatam hey Krishna, uh, your, godness, your goodness has perfect vision. You yourself can know the super soul personality of Godhead because you are present as the plenary position of the Lord. Although you are birthless, you have appeared on this earth for the well-being of all people. Please, therefore, describe the transcendental pastime of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, more vividly. Text 22. Idam hi punsas tapasa shutasya Swishtasya suktasya chabuddhi dattayo ho. Avichyutortha kavi bhir nirupito. Yaduttam shloka gunanu varnanam. Learned circles have positively concluded that the infallible purpose of the advancement of knowledge, namely austerities, study of the Vedas, sacrifice, chanting of hymns and charity culminates in the transcendental descriptions of the Lord who is defined in choice poetry. Text 23. <laughs> Nirupito Balakeva Yogina Shushushane Pravishi Nil Vivikshata. O Muni, in the last millennium, I was born as the son of a certain maid servant engaged in the service of Brahmanas who were following the principles of Vedanta. When they were living together during the four months of the rainy season, I was engaged in their personal service. Text 24. Te mai apeta khila cha paler bhake Dante dhita kri danake nubartini Chakru kripa yadapi tulya darshanaha Shushusha mane mune yolpa bhashini Although they were impartial by nature, those followers of the Vedanta blessed me with their causeless mercy. As far as I am concerned, I was self-full had no attempt for sports, even though I was a boy. In addition, I was not naughty and I did not speak more than required. Text 25. Oh. Cheshtale pana nu modito dvijayhe Sakritsma bhujeta do pasta kil bishaha Evam pravirtasya vishuddha chetasas Tadharma etat maruchi prajayate Once only by their permission, I took the remnants of their food, and by so doing, all my sins were at once eradicated. Thus being engaged, I became purified in heart and at the same time, the very nature of the transcendentalist became attractive to me. Text 26. Tatran vaham Krishna katha pragayatam anugrahena shadavam manoharaha O Vasudeva, in that association and by the mercy of those great Vedantists, I could hear them describe the attractive activities of Lord Krishna. And thus, listening attentively, 
my taste for hearing of the personality of Godhead increased at every step. Tasmin stada labdhurutir mahamate priya shavasya sakhalita matir mama yaya hame tat sada satswa mayaya pashe mai brahmani kalpitam pare. O great sage, as soon as I got a taste of the personality of Godhead, my attention to hear of the Lord was unflinching and my taste developed. I could realize that it was only in my ignorance that I had accepted gross and subtle coverings for both the Lord and I are transcendental. Text 28. Ittam sharat pravirshi kavrito hare Vishana vato menu savam yasho malam Sankitar kitar yamanam muni bhir mahatma bhiri Bhakti pravirtat marajasta mopaha. Thus, during two seasons, the rainy season and autumn, I had the opportunity to hear these great soul sages constantly chant the unadulterated glories of the Lord Hari. As the flow of my devotional service began, the covering of the modes of passion and ignorance vanished. Text 29. I was very much attached to those sages. I was gentle in behavior and all my sins were eradicated in their service. In my heart, I had strong faith in them. I had subjugated the senses and I was strictly following them with body and mind. Text 30. Gyanam guyatamam yat Sakshad Bhagavato Ditam Anvavochan Gamishanta Pyadira Vatsaha. As they were leaving, those Bhakti Vedantas, who are very kind to the poor hearted soul, instructed me that in most confidential subject, which is instructed by the personality of Godhead Himself. Text 31. Ye naiva hum bhagavato vasudevasya vedasaha maya nubhavam vidam yena gachanti tat padama. By that confidential knowledge, I could understand clearly the influence of the energy of Lord Sri Krishna, the Creator maintainer and annihilator of everything by knowing that one can return to him and personally meet him. Text 32. Etat sansu chitam brahmam tapatraye chikitsitam yadishware bhagavati karma brahmani bhavitam O Brahmana Vyasadeva, it is decided by the learned that the best remedial measure for removing all trouble and miseries is to dedicate one's activities to the service of Supreme Lord Personality of Godhead Sri Krishna. Text 33. Amayo Yascha Bhutanam. Jayate ye nasuvrata tadevaya mayam dravyam napunati chikitsitam. O oh good soul, does not a thing applied theoretically cure a disease which was caused by that very same thing? Text 34. Evam niyoga. Sarve sansriti hetavaha, 
विनाशा कल्पन्ते कल्पिता परे thus when all a man's activities are dedicated to the service of the lord those very activities which cause his perpetual bondage become the destroyer of the tree of work text 35 yadatra kriyate karma bhagavat paritoshanam gyanam yat tad dhinam hi bhakti yoga samanvitam whatever work is done here in this life for the satisfaction of the mission of the lord is called bhakti yoga or transcendental loving service to the lord and what is called knowledge becomes a concomitant factor text 36 पूर्वाणायत्र कर्माणी भगवच्छिक्षया सकृता गृणन्ती गुणनामानी कृष्णस्यानुस्मरन्ति च while performing duties according to the order of shri krishna the supreme personality of godhead one constantly remembers him his names and his qualities text 37 om namo bhagavate tubhyam vasudevaya dhimahi pradyumnaya niruddhaya nama sankarna sankarshanaya cha let us all chant the glories of vasudeva along with his tenery expansions pradyumna Anirudha and San Sanskarsana. Text thirty-eight. Iti murtya bhidhane na mantra murti ma murti kam yagya te yagya purusham sa samyag darshana puman. thus he is the actual seer who worships in the form of transcendental sound representation the supreme personality of godhead vishnu who has no material form text 39 imam swani gamam brahman avetya mad anush anushitam ट्रांसडेंटल नॉलेज ऑफ द लॉर्ड एज इनकलकेटेड इन द कॉन्फिडेंशियल पार्ट ऑफ द वेदर्स देन विद स्पिरिचुअल ऑपुलेंसेज एंड देन विद हिस्स intimate loving service sutti samapyada bhashuta vishrutam viboho samapyate yena vidam bhutsitam ditatman ushanti nanyatha please therefore describe the almighty lord's activities which you have learned by your vast knowledge of the vedas for that will satisfy the hankerings of great learned men and at the same time mitigate the miseries of the masses of common people who are always suffering from material pangs indeed there is no other way to get out of such miseries Hi Krishna, Hare please Krishna. Uh, forgive my mistakes. Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Anju Mata Ji, Gita Mata Ji. The recitations were beautiful. Thank you. Over to you, Prabhu Ji. Thank you, Mata Ji. Thank you again uh, for both of you for the recitation. Very nicely done. Thank you. So. Um, 
um, if you stop sharing your screen, I do thank you. So we are discussing the text number 28 today. Shall bring up on my screen. Okay. Anju Mataji, would you like to recite the verse once again for us? Uh, yes, Prabhuji, 20. Is my voice audible to everyone? Is it clear or there's some disturbance? It's clear. For me, it's clear. Thank you. Ittam sharat pravrishi kavritu hare Vishrana vato menu savam yasho malam Sanki muni bhir mahatma bhir Bhakti pravartat marajastamo paha Thank you, Mataji. Ittam das sarat autumn Parivaksho, rainy season, Ritu, two seasons, Hare of the Lord. Vishna Vrata, Vish, Vishna Vataha, continuously hearing me, myself, Anushvam, constantly. Yasha Amalam, unadulterated glories. Sankirtayamanam, chanted by Muni Vihi, the great sages. Maha Atma Bhi, great souls. Bhakti, devotional service. Pravritrata, Pravrata began to flow. Atma, living being. Raja, mode of passion. Tama, mode of ignorance. Upaha, vanishing. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace. Jesus, Bhakti Vedanta, Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada, ki jai. Thus, during the two seasons, the rainy seasons and the autumn, I had the opportunity to hear this great soul. They just constantly chant the unadulterated glories of Lord Hari. As the flow of my devotional service began, the coverings of the modes of passion and ignorance vanished. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Transcendental loving service of the Supreme Lord is the natural inclination of every living being. The instinct is dormant in everyone, but due to the association of material nature, the modes of passion and ignorance cover this form. Time in cover this from time immemorial. If by grace of the Lord and the great soul devotees of the Lord, a living being becomes fortunate enough to associate with the unadulterated devotees of the Lord and gets a chance to hear the unadulterated glories of the Lord, certainly the flow of devotional service takes place like the flow of a river. As the river flows on, Till she reaches the sea, similarly pure devotional service flows by the association of pure devotee till it reaches the ultimate goal, namely transcendental love of Godhead. Such a flow of devotional service cannot stop. On the contrary, it increases more and more without limitation. The flow of devotional service is so potent that any onlooker also becomes liberated from the influence of the modes of passion and ignorance. These two qualities of nature are thus removed. And the living being is liberated, being situated in his original position. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashyat Deshatarine Vanchakalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhube Evacha Patita Nam Pavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Hare Krishna, everyone. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity today. It's been a couple of weeks, well, actually more than it's been three weeks since I've had the opportunity to do this service. Things have been really picking up for me in various aspects of my life, uh, personal, professional, as well as uh, services. As you all know, we are getting ready now for Janmashtami, not long to go, and also preparing for the Bhadra Purnima, which is coming on 10th of September. So, dear devotees, um, this is a very interesting uh, parav, as we say in Hindi, or the place where we are in Srimad Bhagavatam, the first canto, fifth chapter. The chapter is entitled Narada's Instructions to Srila Vyasadeva. It's a very, very important chapter in the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, some very significant uh, instructions for us, uh, although given to Narad Muni by Vyasadeva, but they are really for us more than Narad, um, more than Vyasadeva because Vyasadeva is a literary incarnation of Krishna and is playing a pastime here with Narad Muni uh, by setting an example uh, of that the way to become serious in Krishna consciousness is to accept a spiritual master and thereby progress in the spiritual life. So we see here that same very example is given uh, very nicely that how Narad Muni comes down to the level of Vyasadeva and makes him understand where he is in his life. And then Vyasadeva's a spiritual master. So um, just to give a bit of a recap in this chapter, if you remember, the beginning of the chapter is how it starts with Narada is glorifying Vyasadeva's work and he's inquiring about his despondency. So Narada Muni being a Trikala, the word Trikala is normally used for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but here it is also used for um, Narad Muni because being the pure devotee of the Lord and of being of the same quality as the Lord, he's able to also be past, present, and future. And hence, he knew very well what Vyasadeva was feeling, that he was feeling despondent, and the first four verses talk about that conversation. Then verse 5 to 7, Vyasadeva actually admits his uh, despondency or dissatisfactions. And then he glorifies Narad Muni for being a wonderful saint and a spiritual master. And then uh, he inquires about his deficiency. That was from text 5 to 7. Then text 9, the two defects um, in Vyasadeva's work were discussed, which was, what, what were the two defects? Insufficient glorification of the Lord and or emphasis on the four Purusha Arthas. What are the four Purusha Arthas? Can somebody tell me? Walk with me, people. Um, growth, love, more, man. Oh, uh, no. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Who was that? Um, Shailisha Prabhuji. Shailisha Mataji, Hare Krishna. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. That is correct. Uh, could you give us a translation of those? Of those four? Um, maybe religion. Um, Religious development. Yeah. Economy. Economy development. Um, fruitive activities. Maybe. Fruitive or, activities. Yeah. And uh, liberation. Liberation. Well done. So, because Narad Muni has overemphasized on these four aspects through his various contributions in relation to the Itihas, Puranas, and the Mahabharata, uh, that was one of the reasons why he was feeling despondent that he has not glorified the Lord enough. Um, one, and second, he overemphasized on these four principles. And then from text 10 to 11, the two categories of the literature were discussed, the one which is like a throw which is for materialistic people, and the other one is like a swan, which is for the transcendental people. And then from text 12 to the 16, the bhakti is the only valuable asset or the only valuable thing in one's life was discussed, and Vyasadeva should actually emphasize this. These were the instructions, very potent instructions, which actually set the tone of the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. Those two, uh, sorry, that very aspect, that devotional service is the thing 
was established by Narad Muni or rather re-emphasized to Vyasadeva so he can sit down and really give to the world which was never ever given before in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. Then in text uh, 17 to 19, the progress in bhakti is credited forever. These three texts talks about that there is no loss. There is a similar conversation between Krishna and Arjuna where in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord was telling Arjuna that my devotee never is. Even though he may have an accident to fall down, but he never actually falls. He is always um, situated very uh, correctly or he he reestablishes himself out of the you know accident to fall down he may have. So the devotee never perishes. Whatever progress we make, we if we make 50%, we start from 51% in the next life. Nothing goes waste in spiritual life. So there is a saying which my spiritual master often quotes. Spiritual life, sorry, material life is no gain and all loss. What is material life? There is no gain and it is all loss. Spiritual life is all gain and no loss. Do you get that point? Very important point. Material life, there is no gain, but it is all loss. Whatever we do in material, everything gets lost. Whereas in spiritual life, you nothing lose, you only gain. Whatever you, you sow, that's what you're going to reap. But you will reap, even if you do a little bit, that goes in the spiritual account. But that is not the case with the material uh, side of the things, actually. So something very important to consider. Then text 23, the service to the Bhakti Vedantas was described that how these people came during this four month season and these Bhakti Vedantas arrived. And now from text 24 to the text 28, what was happening? The 14 stages of the devotional service or rather of, of Narad Muni's life was discussed. Now these 14 stages were given in a commentary by Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, which I want to share with you. Was this something discussed in the previous verses, these 14 stages? Work with me, devotees. Anybody who's attended the calls over the last couple of days, was there any mention to the 14 different stages of Narad Muni going through in these verses? Not that I could uh, recall, Prabhuji. You can't recall? Okay, can... Uh, it's okay, I mean... Does anybody remember anything mentioned in relation to those 14 stages of Narad Muni? No, probably it wasn't. Okay, so I take it it wasn't discussed. So I'll share this verse from Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur who very, very nicely explains that how Narad Muni reached where he was uh, through these 14 stages. So bear with me. I'm going to bring my screen up. And we should be able to churn these coding things very nicely. So these are the 14 different stages which Narad Muni went through. And these are explained by Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur in his commentary to Srimad Bhagavatam. The first one was Satam Kripa Mahat Seva Shraddha Guru Padashraya. Bhajaneshu spira bhaktir anartha pakashvam tatha nishtha rutir atashakti rati prematha darshanam hare aryanam bhava iti artha sayus chatur dashe. Now let's look at So this is what Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur says. He says, at the dawn of one's spiritual life, one receives the mercy of great devotee. So the first thing what happened? It's the mercy of the body. Even Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur in his book, Madhurya Kadamini, he gives this various stage, explains, he analyzes what is the cause of someone coming to devotional service. And all the other counter arguments which are mentioned in the book are refuted. Somebody says piety, somebody says fasting, somebody says austerity. All of those are completely rejected. The very fact why someone comes to devotional service is actually the mercy of a Vaishnava or the Lord himself. It is a mercy which brings us closer to the Lord. And we see this in the life of Narad Muni very nicely explained here in these 14 stages. So the first, what happened? He got the mercy. And then what happened? So once he receives the mercy of the great devotees, one then engages in the service of such devotees. It is only Sahan Mahat Sevaya Vipra, only by the service to those wise men who are completely on the platform of pure devotional service 
a pure devotional service can invoke in our heart. So you see here, that, that is the second thing he did. He engaged in the service. Then this led to the development of his, his Shraddha. So first thing is Shraddha, right? Uh, uh, Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, that, that process there. But here, don't confuse. The, this process is kind of similar, but we are talking specifically the 14 stages of Narad Muni. What happened to Narad Muni in these various 14 stages? So initially he had the Shraddha, otherwise he wouldn't have been born to the womb of such a close mother who had the desire to serve the Vedantists. So that Shraddha was definitely there. But that Shraddha ultimately attracted the mercy. Mercy came. He was able to then serve the Vaishnavas. And through that service, his Shraddha became very strong. And then, after which one attains the shelter of the lotus feet. So he accepted the, those Vedantists as his spiritual master. So those are the four stages. To, then he started to, the process of Bhajana Kriya. And one of the process, the Bhajana Kriya means Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Atmanvedanam, all these nine processes uh, include the process of bhajan, bhajan kriya. So then the bhajan started. And especially how in this case started through the process of hearing, Shravanam. Shravanam, although it comes, you know, Shravanam, Kirtanam is the first important aspect in this nine process of bhajan kriya. The Shravanam is very, very important. So then he started here. And after he started to hear, what happened? So everything, whatever was in the heart, which was troublesome, it started to completely go away. What happens when you give an oral reception to the classes of Srimad Bhagavatam? All that which is unwanted, it completely starts to go away. And, uh, and then, so that Anartha Nivriti, all the Anartha started to go away. And then the removal of unwanted desires from one's heart. Eighth thing happened, all the unwanted desires went away. And this led to the awakening of the stages of Nishtha, study. Nishtha means to be uh, steady, like be uh, firm. Uh, and then devotional service followed by Ruchi. Then came the taste. Ruchi uh, means taste. From Ruchi, you get the genuine taste to do such a service followed by Ashakti. Ashakti means you have a complete attachment to the spiritual practice and spiritual sadhana and complete detachment to the material activity. And then comes finally attachment to the Lord. And after this attachment, the 12th stage is one experience, sorry, the 11th stage is one experiences Rati. Rati means it's the stage above the attachment, like complete um, you can say complete attachment or complete absorption in the in the Lord. This is a stage of a bhava in one. And from that rati, one actually comes to the platform of prema. And interestingly enough, although we think that prema is the highest place, but Vishwanacha in this particular verse makes the case that there are two other things which are above the prema. So the 13th stage is one can then have darshan, which is the direct perception of the Lord. Okay, you've developed the prema, but what's next? The next thing is you directly see the Lord. You know, whether you see him inside or you also see him outside, you see directly the Lord. And finally, what happened in the 14th stage is that one experiences of the madhurya compre com comprehensiveness, sweet comprehensive, the complete sweetness of the Lord. You completely align yourself and you feel that sweetness in your heart as the devotee of the Lord. And these are the 14 different stages of the advancement in true, true love, especially in relation to the Narad Muni's life. So, does anybody has any comments or any reflections to point before we talk about a little bit more, five minutes hearing? This is a very important verse I'm sharing from Shashila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur's commentary in this relation. Uh, which really brings the point home that how the devotion service progresses. The, the opportunity to serve service is a privilege to come very often. And once we say I have many things to do, that's our creation stage. But one who is a little bit advanced and go all in to accept such devotional service and try to do it to the best of his capacity. Let's see if anyone has any reflection or Hare Krishna Prabhuji. 
I was wondering, like, do they happen one by one, or they generally like an overlap of couple of stages? Madhuri, I'm not able to see your name. It would be good to see you. Ah, uh, Prabhuji Shailaja again. Oh, Shailaja Madhuri, hi. Um, like, do they happen like one by one, or uh, kind of an overlap, Prabhuji? Like, suppose a person starts with the first stage, can he also have a bit of the fifth stage, or is it like okay. just? Yeah. So, so um, there can be an overlapping, especially when you are at the stage. Let's say when you have developed uh, an, where there is anartha nivriti happening, you will see during the time of anartha nivriti where all the unwanted things are going away, you will notice the glimpse. Some glimpse of nishtha will start to come because your bhajan will become steady, because the very symptom that anartha nivriti is happening that. Although it may not be completely convincing, but you will see some glimpse. So there may be a very slight overlap, but Mataji, these are progressive stages of devotional service. They, they actually happen one by one. And we can see in the life of Narad Muni, he got the mercy and then he served those. And how did he serve those Vedantis? We learned in the previous verses. He served them by physically using his senses of the body, by serving him prashadam, by smelling the flowers which were offered to the Lord and then smelled by the, by the Vedantis. Then he served by washing their plates and then he served by actually eating their remnants. These are all the different limbs of performing physical service to the Vedantis, which he did. And because he, was, he did that, that further attracted the mercy of the Lord. And due to that process, he was then able to accept them as a, his spiritual master and engage in the devotional service. You see, a lot of times, the bhajan we do can still be called bhajan because it's it's but it is very much a practice in devotion it is not a mature practice but the real bhajan kriya really begins after one takes the shelter of a spiritual master but we are very fortunate that we have shila Prabhupada, our founder acharya who is very kindly giving us a shiksha at the interim level while we wait to accept a spiritual master who's coming in his line who is initiated by shila Prabhupada or someone who's initiated by Shila Prabhupada's disciple. For example, we have few in the ISKCON community. So like, take an example, I mean, there are many Prabhupada disciples who are initiating, but there are some, like Jay Advaita Maharaj has a disciple called His Holiness Kadamakana Swami Maharaj. He does, he gives initiation, although we hear his health is not well, and we pray for Maharaj's uh, well. And then you have uh, in, in the community like Bhakti Vigyan Goswami Maharaj, who I believe is a, a disciple of Radharaja Maharaj. So like this, there are many devotees who we need, they're coming in the line, we need to take the shelter of those spiritual master and then be firmly situated in devotional service. I hope that answers your question. Yes, Prabhuji, perfectly answered. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, I want to ask you for Narad Muni that these stages are applicable, that it uh, applied for Narad Muni only, or is it for everybody? Masaji, please do tell me your name because for some reason, I don't know what happened to my... Rupa Mataji. Rupa Mataji. Rupa Mataji, Hare Krishna. I did, I did think the voice was familiar. Um, one second, let me just see if the name is correct. I can't, I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. But anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, in answer to your question, um, Rupa Mataji, that it is, it can be very much applicable to our own life because anything which is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam is actually meant to be applied in our life. So although the here particularly Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur adds up these different stages to Narad Muni's life just to show the example like we normally hear, right? Uh, uh, Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, like that, there are the, the, the whole stage is there. But there are a few other dimensions or elements added here um, to Narad Muni's life to make it 14. So they are very much applicable. If you think of all the various stages which Narad Muni went through, we, we, we do get at least at the initial level, you know, we, we are there where we are able to engage in the service of your devotees uh, when they come to, to, to Bhaktivedanta Manor or when we are able to travel to the Dham because the devotees live there as well. And uh, Srila Prabhupada is a pure devotee, so we are trying to serve him. So, yeah, that, that elements are very much there. All these states will aggressively come as we strengthen our sadhana bhakti. So it is very much able to us as well, Mataji. 
if we get the mercy of uh, Srila Prabhupada and other Acharyas in our line, and she, especially Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then, and he, then all the 14 can be very much happy together. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. In a nutshell, all I can say is, Mataji, we are just a mercy case. At least I can speak for myself. Because there is so much of up and down in our bhakti. So many things attract us. You know, the material senses are so strong that a little bit of this we get carried away. So in Kali Yuga, most of us, at least speaking for myself, we are mercy case because only it's Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's why he's called Patita Pavana Hetu Na Avatar. He's, the, uh, he's actually come here to deliver the most fallen. Starting from me, I can speak like that's why Narutam Das Thakur sings that beautiful bhajan. Uh, Goranga karuna karo, ami bina hi na jane, moshama patita prabhu, nahi tribhuane. He saying that, oh my dear Lord, in the, there is no more fallen than me. So please, I give me the, your mercy because I am the most fallen. And Madhavananda Prabhu, who lives in Jagannath Puri, from whom we heard this bhajan first time many years ago, he to, he used to tell us, like nicely explain that, you know, if there was a long queue, he would say that we would come from London and, you know, California, many devotees in the Yatra. He said if there was a long queue of the devotees coming to Jagannath Puri and somebody is really at the end, you know, or, and he's feeling that oh, I can never reach and I'm, I'm so fallen. That person can actually attract the mercy of Mahaprabhu because we are really a fallen case in the Kali Yuga. So the more we can put ourselves in the front of the Vaishnavas, in front of their instruction, and especially through hearing Srila Prabhupada, reading also performs the part of hearing. So if you read Prabhupada's books daily and you hear Srila Prabhupada lectures, then you are very much you very much become a recipient. In fact, Bhagavatam, Lord Brahma says, Daya Bhak, the word used is Daya Bhak. It becomes your inheritance right, which nobody can take from you to go back to the spiritual world. If you dedicate, if we dedicate ourselves in that mood, which Brahmaji is talking about. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, what time is it? Oh, it's 8.35. So just very quickly, I wanted to make a couple of points. Um, point number one, um, Srimad Bhagavatam, like we heard from Radhika Raman Prabhu, who was here, he gave us his association that it is such a fine literature that you cannot find a comparison anywhere in the world, in the three worlds with this literature like Srimad Bhagavatam. So now that we have this literature which has come in our line, let's try to read dedicate our life and hear the Bhagavatam classes which are given in the morning as much as possible and by Srila Prabhupada. Because only by hearing the taste will gradually come. You know, we are in a very diseased condition. In the diseased condition, all we think of Facebook and use our finger to scroll up and down on the social media or, you know, waste our time doing all sorts of other things. But somehow or other, if we force our mind to put our, put our ears in front of the transcendental vibration of the Lord, then there is definitely some hope that we can gradually get purified. You know, our ears, although are very small, but the whole is like, it's like an ocean. You know, we take in so much of vibration in these ears. And what happens when something goes in your ears, there are certain things which can come out, but there are certain things which also can penetrate into the heart. And these Material sound vibration is something like it does leaves impression in our heart before it actually goes out of the ear. But the spiritual vibration which Narad Muni is talking about or Srila Vyasadev or Sukadev Goswami is referring in this particular section and in this particular uh, part is the glorification of Krishna. Shunvanti, Gayanti, you know, these, these, these beautiful verses, they are being sung by the previous saints and the Acharyas. In, in, in such a beautiful way, you know. And the more we hear, the more we put ourselves in front of that vibration, then slowly, slowly that the chitta will start to get clear. Slowly, slowly our chitta will start to become clean. And then we can be really re then resituated in our constitutional position, which is Jivera Sarupoe Krishnera Nitya Das. 
That is our happy condition, not any other condition. So those were a couple of points I wanted to make. Um, yeah, so let's uh, see if anybody has any more comments or questions uh, from today's session. We are so lucky, you know, we have Srila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur, Srila uh, Sridhar Shida, Shida Swami, Srila Prabhupada, so many Acharyas who have given us this wonderful commentaries to look at Srimad Bhagavatam with so many different angles of vision. And as Radhika Raman Prabhu was saying, you know, there is so much, you, you may read one time and then you finish and you read again and then you will derive more fresh and fresh meaning from Srimad Bhagavatam. This literature is ever fresh and and, 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 and gives ever joy. The more you read, the more joyful you feel, you know, when, when you read Srimad Bhagavatam. These days, I'm reading the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam towards the end, now on the 79th, 80th chapter, where the Sudama story is given, how Sudama goes to the palace of Krishna, and then how, what he's thinking, his mindset, uh, and, and, and all those wonderful pastime, and how Krishna receives them. He washes his feet, puts the water on his head, I mean, where else would you hear these pastimes which are happening in the spiritual world, you know? Few chapters before we see Narad Muni lands up in the Dwarka and he just casually comes to see what's happening with the Lord and he's bewildered initially seeing the Lord is doing something in one palace then doing something else in the other palace. You tell me which scripture in the world will give us such amazing insights into these wonderful, um, uh, you know, pastimes actually. Shalesh Prabhu, Hare Krishna, you have your hand up. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Ranabha Pranam, so wish prepared, nice having back a very wonderful class. And thank you for organizing the wonderful uh, uh, sessions with uh, Radhika Raman Prabhu, that was very nice. Yeah, just a, qu a quick one, Prabhuji, just to um, add to your point uh, with, with the previous question that was asked about 14 stages. I mean, uh, uh, clearly as... Um, uh, um, Sri Rupa Goswami is uh, written in Bhakti Rasamitra Sindhu, uh, the nine stages for us as being uh, Gaudiyas and Rupanugas. I presume the nine stages are more applicable to us rather than the 14 that uh, was uh, highlighted for Narad Muni. Obviously, nine, the 14 is an expansion on the nine, but uh, uh, as um, uh, Bhakti Rasamitra Sindhu says, I think we, we probably um, fit more in line with the nine stages that are identified in, in, in by Rupa this one? Um, no, not really, Prabhu, because I mean, they, we do definitely, but Vishwana Chakravati Thakur is as much as a Gauriya Vaishnava as Rupa Goswami. So he's very much following in the paths of Rupa Goswami. So in the commentary, when he's sharing and he's giving us this view, and, and if you look at those, those pastimes, or the, sorry, those 14 stages, I mean, there is nothing which stands out which a devotee may not go through. So all he's done is he's taken the that whole uh, the element of the Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu and expanded it to see from Narad Muni's life uh, how that has become evident in his life and how he went through those stages. Like so, similarly <clears throat> in our life, it is very much the case. We start with the mercy, we begin with the shraddha, then we are able to serve and take the shelter of the spiritual master. So some of these. Details are not mentioned in the Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu, but Srila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur has just expanded that. So there is a very, I mean, the very reason because Vishwana Chakravati Thakur is speaking that they, they can very much be um, applicable to anyone who's following that process. But that, uh, in essence, but what Rupa Goswami is giving us is, is, is those, you know, stages as you just explained actually as a framework which is there. But like, for example, uh, Vishwana Chakravati is giving two additional aspects uh, at the end, which is go beyond the prema, which is having the darshan of the Lord and then and feeling that complete bliss and, and the joy of being with the Lord. So that is that makes a complete sense when you hear, right, from Vishwana Chakravati Thakur. And that's why we say Guru Mukha Padma Vakya, that whatever our spiritual master says, we accept that in totality. So we, we accept what, what Vishwana Chakravati Thakur is giving. And and that is what if you see Srila Prabhupada, when he gives his commentary, there are things he expands on a bit more. So similarly, Vishwana Chakravati Thakur, who's coming in that line, he's a very much a Rupanuga, like, you know, all of us wanting to be. So he's also trying to give his import because these are pure devotees and, and the Acharyas can actually give that um, import and expand on some of those details which are given in the scriptures by 
either Rupa Goswami or directly by Krishna Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay, it, let's have any more comments. We can have one last comment or question. Okay, somebody made a comment here once again. Uh, this is Vinesh uh, Prabhu. You're incredible in your knowledge and presentation as always. It's amazing to hear you. Thank you, Prabhu. I was wondering whether it is possible to skip stages. Also, do you have to keep hold of the previous stages to stay fixed on the stage you currently get are on for both text 27 for we saying for both the Lord and I are transcendental. This is related to the aspect of the Lord and the living entity being the same in quality, but different in quantity. So both are transcendental, but Krishna is ultimately supreme. Yes, that is correct. So let me take your question. I was wondering whether it is possible to skip the stages. Prabhu, if you go back to what Chalish Prabhu was saying and refer to the Rupa Goswami chronological order, it's not possible to skip the stages because the stages are very natural. Uh, you cannot go from the level, for example, from Anartha Nivriti straight to Bhava. It's not possible because after Anartha Nivriti, your real bhajan begins because you develop some nishtha, some dhritta, some determination to perform your devotional service. And only when you do your bhajan with that nishtha, you're able to rise to the level of ruchi. The taste will come. The taste won't come just like that, you know. However, however, because we depend on the mercy of the Lord, anything is possible. Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was present, he went to South Asia, um, people after people. Um, but again, there are two aspects of living. You, we may see it from externally and, and conclude, okay, this person was somebody who was just a banana seller and he got pure devotion of the Lord. This person was a Brahmana who has was oozing from his body, Mahaprabhu embraced him, he got love of the Lord. So there are two aspects. One aspect to see, yes, it is a pure mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and, and the person got it and we may look at externally and so, oh, there was no stages involved. However, because it's Siddhanta, we also have to accept that these people were enacting the pastimes of the Lord. So in their previous life, they've already gone through those stages. So for them, it was a moment of a flash. So I would say the safest way for us to practice is to go stage by stage. I mean, we even don't have to go. We just have to follow the process and we will see this happening in our life. If we are dedicated to, to following Srila Prabhupada's instruction and following mm -hmm. the instructions of our spiritual mm -hmm. master, you will see how naturally we are going to make that progression. And you will see for yourself that you, you will not be able to jump from the other because we are, Prabhu, there are two kinds of devotees. One is called the Sadhana Siddha. The other one is called um, uh, what is the other one? Kripa Siddha. Kripa, uh, Kripa Siddha, correct. So we are in the category of sadhana siddha. By performing our bhajan and our sadhana, we are going step by step. But the devotees who are Kripa Siddha, for them it's possible they could skip the step and go back to, to the spiritual world. I'm sure nothing is coming to my mind right now, but Bhagavatam will probably have some examples of such people who immediately went, you know, became the cause of the mercy. If you look at Putna, for example, I mean, she wasn't performing a bhajan. She had a very envious attitude. Uh, but we do not know what she was in the previous life. And and uh, But Krishna accepted that move. So we are in that, she may have been the very much, uh, what do you call, Kripa Siddha. She got the mercy. But we are in the category of Sadhana Siddha, who can one day, by the mercy, go through and, and get perfection in our life. But as a strict followers of the Vaidhi Bhakti, uh, we have to be very careful to just follow this process step by step. That's very, very important in our Siddhanta. We cannot imitate. That's why Prabhupada was very strong against the whole Sahajya principle to start imitating a highest level of bhav and becoming, you know, there was a whole Gopi Bhav club which started Prabhupada's time. And Prabhupada was completely against that principle. You know, he made sure that this is not our path. We haven't come to that stage that way we can imitate the pastimes of the Lord and become. So, Sorry, Prabhu, gave you a long answer to a short question, but yeah, I hope you get the point. We, we have to go step by step. And I think there was one more point to make. 
you have to keep hold of the previous pages. Yeah, you, as I said, you don't have to keep hold, you naturally progress and you will see it for yourself as you progress through the path. Okay, Prabhu and Mataji, uh, it's uh, 8.46 now, like to conclude. I just want to remind you there are a few days left for Janmasmi and Bhadra Purnima. Please help us uh, by reaching out to your friends and family and sharing the glories of Bhagavatam and help us in this wonderful effort of distributing Srimad Bhagavatam for the pleasure of Srila Prabhupada. I wish you all a wonderful evening and uh, I wish you all a very nice time in preparing for Janmasmi, our consciousness, so we can serve the Lord nicely. Vancha Kalpa Tarubya Shah, Kripa Sindhu, Vevata, Patita Nam Bhav. Bhavane Pi Vrishna Vipi Vrishna Vipi Vrishna Vipi Vrishna Vipi Vrishna Vipi Vrishna Vipi Vrishna Thank you. 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 Thank you.